it's interesting that you mentioned that at the beginning of the show, I posed the question, why has there been such an attack on the black family structure? The second question that I have is, what is your opinion on the assault on the black man, black manhood, and black masculinity? When you say assault, um, I'm not quite sure who is doing the assaulting. Um, I mean, just generally, the black man has been under siege um, for a long time. And I'm not saying it's intentional. It's just a byproduct, and I go back again, to it's just a byproduct of, of slavery. Um, and then you have discrimination, and it, it does emasculate uh, uh, men when they can't have jobs, when they can't um, feed their families, and, and our industry um, is, is the drug industry or, or some undercover, you know, criminal operation to make money, you know, fraud. Um, we're not given the, the resources, our schools, you know, are underfunded. Yet and still, we place people in positions to help us, and it doesn't seem like we're getting the help that we so desperately need. We need jobs. We need politicians to step up more to where it's effective, because right now you just have a lot of people just talking. There's no action. There's no action at all. Um, There's no industry in the black community. If you want to help us, you know, teach a man to fish. Put some industry in the black community. Let our men work. Um, You know, a lot of us, you know, don't go to college. You know, we have other skills. But there, you know, there are people on street corners, black men on street corners that are smarter than than astronauts. Mm -hmm. So, you know, a lot of it is misplaced, you know, and, and it all starts with the family, the breakdown of the family. There are no mom and pop black stores, um, uh, pretty much, and we don't even support our own. So there, we, there's a lot going on in black community um, that needs to be addressed, and really, it's just a bunch of talk right now. There's really no action, but they want that vote. They want that vote. They want yes, that vote. yes, they do. Yes, they do, and they will make all the promises to you that they possibly can to to try to convince you to to vote for them. When it comes to the family court system, Judge Judge Kaysen, Mm -hmm. why does it appear to be a sense of bias against men fighting for custody? Well, okay, so if if you share a child with with your partner, it is very important to establish paternity um, in Illinois. uh, this applies to men who have a child born out of wedlock, and there's a lot of men in our community that do have a lot of children and are not married. And in Illinois, it's presumed that any child born during a marriage is that of the father. So, you know, if you're married, it's, it's a presumption that that is your child if you have a child within that marriage you don't have a child within a marriage and is out of wedlock, there is no such presumption. And the father must undertake certain actions to establish his parental rights. Um, you know, that old saying, mama's baby, papa's baby. Daddy's maybe. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, um, and men have to pretty much take the initiative to, Right now, file an allocation of parental responsibility. You know, it used to be, you know, custody, but now it's called uh, allocation of parental uh, responsibility. You have to establish paternity, um, and then once that paternity is established, then you, um, you know, file that petition for allocation of parental responsibility so that you can get some visitation rights and at that time, you know, that's when, if, if it didn't happen before, uh, that child support kicks in. And, and that's a whole nother, um animal in and of itself. You know, at the, at the very, you know, men, men do have to take the initiative, if, if you have a child born out of, outside of the marriage, to establish 
your parental rights. If you want to be in that child's life, you're going to have to do that. And that's just the way it is. Now, Judge Kaysen, wouldn't a father already establish parental rights if he's on that child's birth certificate? No, that's, that's not the case. It's one thing to sign a birth certificate, but there's also something in Illinois which is called a, a, a voluntary acknowledgement of paternity. So at the time, when you, if you saw anybody sign a, a birth certificate, that really doesn't mean anything um, okay. except, you know, you signed the birth certificate. In order to pretty much establish that you are the father, that is what pretty if you sign that, then that means that you are basically carrying on the responsibility as a, as a father. However, just signing that, that's just establishing the pater, a paternity, okay? You still have to petition the court for visitation. And on that VAP, it does tell you that this does not mean that you have any visitation or custodial rights. It's just basically saying that you are establishing yourself as the father. And that's mostly for single couple, couples, correct? Uh, yeah, yeah, okay. that's for single couples. Okay. Because it's a presumption that you are the father if you're married. Definitely. Thank you for sharing that with our listeners. Uh, hopefully that kind of clarified uh, some of those questions. Judge Kaysen, tell us how life has been for you now as an attorney in Illinois having your own law firm before we take our first call. Um, to be honest with you, I, I feel like I'm a young retiree. <laughs> um, and I'm just uh, really just getting back in the in the groove of things. After the bench, I, I went to um, serve with the Department of Children and Family Services. So it really wasn't a broad range of law. It was basically just dealing with juvenile laws and termination of parental rights. Um, and that's kind of confining. So I'm not really kind of used to being confined because there's a broad range of law out here. And so um, I feel a little more freer um, in a sense. Pretty cool to be your own boss and um, make changes in, in people's lives, hopefully fulfilling. You are certainly making changes in people's lives, and we appreciate the work that you are doing and for your causes as well. Guys, you're listening to the King Yah Speaks show, and I am your host. And joining us is our most honored guest tonight, Honorable Laninia Kaysen. Well, welcome to the King Yah podcast. As you may have guessed, I am your host, King Yah, a father, activist, and professional speaker. On this podcast, we discuss relationships, criminal justice, news and politics, black history, culture, and domestic violence awareness. If this is your first time being here, I want to say thank you and encourage you to keep listening. Each week you can expect to hear thought-provoking interviews as well as personal relationship tips that will help enhance your life. You will have access to resourceful downloads that you can implement daily to become more productive. Thank you for spending some time with me today. The purpose of this podcast is because everyday people inspire me through their stories of trial and error in life. Now let's jump into your favorite podcast. What better way to share our stories? All right, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. We are back. You will have an opportunity to ask a question or make a comment to the Honorable Laninia Kaysen. Good evening. My name is Jane Joseph Owens L. I'm a dialysis patient. My voice is complicated because of assaults from the government. Anyhow, uh, I honor the sister, Judge Laninia Kaysen, and the Honorable Joe Brown, as well as yourself. My question is, the Honorable Judge, uh, the Honorable Judge A. Wallace Tashima, in case number 83-630 AWT in the uh, Central District of California, United States of America versus 
James Joseph Owens Hill, I got found guilty of attempted murder in a federal prison. The United States Attorney, Mr. William Frank Fahey, later on, beyond my knowledge, filed a motion to dismiss the attempted murder and the Honorable A. Wallace Tashima on April 3rd, 1993, uh, this uh, terminated the 20-year sentence, but I was still compelled to do the 20 years. I was right there in Marin, Illinois, so I know something about East St. Louis, Illinois. I'm also the author of two race safety propositions to stop gang violence and mass murder, and uh, it changed my blood pressure medication from amlodipine and lisinopril to triamterine with no potassium chloride supplement and put me on dialysis as a death sentence, called me a nigger on the yard when the whites and Mexicans were sent to kill me, but they wouldn't prepare to kill or to die that day. So they came together with us and asked me to use my legal skills and understanding of the Constitution to stop the white officers from forcing them uh, with money and knives to kill blacks and Muslims. So my first question is, as a lawyer, can you assist me or any other lawyer, any judge, in the interest of justice to bring some kind of stability in my life or equity where the court issued that order for me to be terminated for 20 years? A black lady named Rockhanna Harvey set the order to the federal prison. They refused to act on it. The other question I got is even briefer. Mr. King Ya introduced me to his case, and he taught me about a police officer filing a report uh, against his lover that said that he assaulted her. The police said there was no probable cause. Yet, two weeks later, that same information was used by that same lady and another female to come together uh, to go to another judge to bring a, a case against this brother. And I, I want to know, is there an ex, ex post facto clause violation if what the police wrote was said there was no probable cause, and I'm saying, whether I'm right or wrong, I'm still saying it. At the time of the crime, the crime was not a crime because the criminal activity alleged as a crime was actual innocent conduct when that police said, no probable cause, I'm not going to lock him up. All right, Owens Hill. Judge Kaysen. Uh, yes, oh. sir. Well, uh, this is the ex post facto portion of it. So uh, it's ex post facto is a law that makes illegal an act that was legal when committed. Um, so if you feel as though you have an ex post facto violation, um, then I would suggest that you consult a criminal attorney in um, the state of California or wherever um, the judgment uh, was, was, was rendered. Um, I'm not familiar with uh, California law, but um, I, that's, that's my, my suggestion to you. Uh, with regard to that, and I'm not quite sure what the first question was because I was listening to um, the brother's, um, you know, uh, explanation of, of the events that happened in, in his life, um, but I, I, I'm not quite sure what California law is, or I would have to actually look at what you're talking about because I wasn't quite sure what the what the what the issue was. I'm sorry. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, sister. Uh, well, if, I, if you give me permission, sister, uh, if you can have uh, King Ya to give me a written address of a firm, your firm, I can send you my court order so you can look at them. Okay, that'll be fine. Thank, thank you, you sir. Thank you, Orzel. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you so much for responding to our brother's question.